Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. Now, dolls, I have a couple dolls that I need to repair and upgrade before I make the new dolls. I hope you all don't mind. There will be brief doll nudity in this video. All the dolls are heavily sedated and unconscious, and they won't feel any pain during the doll repair process. But if you're uncomfortable with brief doll nudity or the doll repair process, you may need to turn away now. So I'm going to start out by repairing some existing dolls. Now some of these are the ones that I got in the haul the other day. I really like them. They're really nice. They're attractive dolls, but their body structure to me felt a little bit flimsy. So I need to totally remove her clothes, clean her up, fortify and stabilize her body, and prepare her for her new life. Now her skirt and dress were made of a really lovely silk. Some of it is almost dry rotted, but I'm going to try to salvage at least the skirt part. Um, again, her body is very flimsy and floppy. I don't want to break her, but I'm definitely going to have to get between her and this glue to get this outfit off of her. I really love that they were as thorough as they were in her dressing. She's got on a slip and bloomers. She has on like the whole setup. I really love that. But all this needs to be removed and washed. It's kind of dingy and dusty looking. So I definitely got to take everything off so I can freshen her up. I truly wanted to salvage her dress, but I think the only part I'm going to be able to save is the skirt. The top part or the bodice is all glued on, so I'm going to have to cut it. Now, when I got to a certain point, I got through to a lot of foam and literally it was disintegrating. It was dry rotted. So I just unraveled all of it, took it completely off of her legs. And then I was able to really realize why her body felt so flimsy and floppy. She was made out of some really thin, super fine pipe cleaners. So dolls, in an instance like this, this is definitely a case where I needed to totally revamp her. All of this is dry rotted. She can't sit up straight. The wire is too thin and too flimsy. So right here, I'm using a little acetone to remove all the dark yellow and orange glue that's stuck to her body. Now dolls, I want you to just keep in mind, you have to be patient when you're doing a doll repair process because a lot of time the pieces are old and so you don't wanna damage anything that can be salvaged but you definitely have to clean the dial up. Now I'm looking at her neck. Her neck is made out of some kind of cording and it appears to be secured inside her body. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not going to take her head off, but I'm going to stabilize it and make it non-movable. Now, in order to stabilize her arms and legs, I'm just going to use a piece of pipe cleaner here. I just wound it around the existing pipe cleaner to give her arm a little bit just more firmness and make it where it would actually be able to be positioned and I did it on both arms I just took the piece of pipe cleaner and wrapped it around and I just wound it around the piece that exists which will make it again more stable and it'll allow me to put her hands in different positions Now I just kind of want you to watch me here in this process I'm just wrapping it, literally wrapping it around the existing pipe cleaner portion of her arm to fill in the gap between her elbow and her shoulder. When the process is done, I'm able to put her arm straight down at her sides. Plus, they look like normal, healthy size arms. Now let's fix her legs. So when it came to her legs, I needed to do something a little bit different because she needs to be able to stand up which is already hard because her feet are too small. So in addition to using the pipe cleaner for her legs, I had considered using my thermostat wire, but then I decided against it because I really need something that will fit down into her existing leg. And as you can see here, the thermostat wire is too thick. So I opted for my aluminum wire, which is the perfect size. It's very pliable and it was thin enough to fit down into her existing leg. So I cut a piece of wire that was long enough to shape into sort of like a upside down V and put each end into each of her legs and allowed the pointed part to be up toward her torso. Now this is the aluminum wire I'm using. I will put a link in the description for the wire so you'll know what I used in this process. But after I got it in the U shape, I began to wrap the aluminum wire with a piece of pipe cleaner as well on both legs. 
So I wrap the pipe cleaner really firmly around the existing pipe cleaner and the aluminum wire. So dolls, when you're repairing a doll, there really is no right or wrong way. You just need to assess the problem and correct it using the resources available. Do what's necessary for the best outcome. You want to focus on normalizing proportions and the ability to position the doll. After I was satisfied with how I positioned and wrapped the wire, I did put hot glue down into the cavity of the porcelain leg to secure it. Now, after I felt comfortable that her arms and legs were stable, I did need to bulk her up a little bit in her lower part of her body because I still have that little part where it's just very, very thin pipe cleaner. So I did use an additional piece of my pipe cleaner to bulk up like her thigh and pelvis area to make it, like I said, naturalize it more to the rest of her body. Now, after I felt comfortable with what was going on with her body at this point, I added hot glue into the little divot in her shoulder or collarbone area and then just positioned her neck right into it. Now, I've never had to stabilize a porcelain neck or head before because a lot of the porcelain dolls I see, the neck and head are all made into one. So hopefully that will hold. But time will tell if I need to do something different. <laughs> now that her body is all stabilized, her head and neck are secure, it's time for me to wrap her body. Now, dolls, when I wrap my doll's body to secure everything in, I use this medical mesh gauze and it comes in rolls and so I just find the area that I wanted to start so in this instance I'm starting in her waist area and I'm just folding it and I just begin to wrap it really really tight to bind up all the areas that I've put my pipe cleaners in because I want everything to stay secure and I want her body to have a natural uh, shape to it and not look as though she's made of wire pipe cleaners and bandages. So let's go on to the next doll. Now, this was a doll that came in the bundle that I got when I got the dress shop house. She was a really lovely doll. She actually had on a bathrobe. I really like her height, her feet, her body structure, but I really, really didn't like this hair, so I definitely had to remove it. So it was, came off pretty easily. The whole thing did. I just had to pick a few pieces of the glue that were stuck to her head which wasn't too bad. But the thing is, the main structure of this doll really wasn't a bad structure, but it was just that her foam padding was all wacky and weird. It was like they just wadded her all up and really didn't give her too much of a shape. So I'm going to fix her up because to me, this looks pretty bad. So I added a little hot glue to her arm and use the exact same process that I had used on the other dial that I used. And I just began to wrap the foam really, really super tight. I mean, really, really tight to just pull it all in, just wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. And I wrapped her arms and I wrapped her shoulders and I just kept going and I added a little bit um, of the gauze to her legs, the part that wasn't in the inside the porcelain. And I kept wrapping it until, like I said, until her body was all wrapped and stable, similar to the other doll. Even though her wire wasn't floppy, that foam was just, to me, all out of proportion. And it would have really been a challenge trying to dress her on top of that puffy foam. So I got her all together, got her fixed up nice here. So now I'll be able to dress her. She has on very, very modern shoes. She's got on like some sandals, but I really love her feet because she has nice feet that are the more in proportion to the actual size of the doll. So it makes standing her up really, really easy. I don't understand why some makers make the doll's feet so small. I don't really get that, but I digress. So I did wrap her legs and thighs a little bit more. I needed a little bit extra gauze because I wanted um, everything to really be firm. And I really didn't want to see the yellow from that foam at all on her body. So after a few minutes of doing finishing touches and adding hot glue here and there to make sure she's totally secure. Now she's all ready and set to be wigged and dressed as well. 
Now, this particular doll, someone had already changed his body where he had plastic legs and a porcelain upper body, but he needed arms and hands. Now, as you can see, he's already got his pants on because his lower body is plastic, so it didn't need any wrapping. But I do need to wrap his torso as well as secure his wrist to his arm and wrap his shoulder area. So I've already pre-made his hands. I'm using the thermostat wire as his arms. I'm adding hot glue to the ends of the thermostat wire. I did do the other hand the exact same way. Now dolls, I'm sorry this little portion is a little bit out of focus because I kind of got into the moment of wrapping him and forgot about the camera. Now, I really love this gauze because it is lightweight, very stretchy, which makes it easy to create a believable silhouette under the clothing because it creates a silhouette that looks nice, neat, and tight. But the main reason for wrapping is one, to conceal and enclose any foam and to add like almost like a flesh layer to add bulk on top of the wire. And to me, this works really well without adding a lot of weight to the doll's body. Now this part, I'm just allowing the video to play because I don't want you to miss everything I'm doing, just trying to speed through everything. I just wanted you to see how I'm wrapping. I don't cut the wrap until I'm completely satisfied with the arm and get down near the wrist part. But when I'm wrapping the rest of the body, I try to do it all in one complete motion without cutting the gauze. Now he's ready for me to add his hair. Now I just wanted to show you really quick. Now these are some of the hands that I made in the previous video. These were created for this doll where I added a body that I created, but the top of his body is porcelain. Now I'm drilling just kind of a little small hole so that the tip of the wire will be able to fit in there. And I'm not making it real deep, but just kind of giving it like a little cup area. Now you definitely can bake wire into the hand if you prefer. I connected the hand to the end of the wire with the hot glue and allowed it to set. And when I was done, I added glue just like I did with the previous dial. Now, although his arms that I created with thermostat wire previously were already wrapped, I did use an additional amount of the wrap to connect the hand and wrist to the existing arm. I like that the hot glue cures really quickly and it holds really tight and it allows me to um, really seal on that bandage around that wrist area. But if you want to experiment with different glues, definitely be my guest. So now this young man is ready to be dressed as well. He doesn't need any hair. <laughs> so now that everybody's up to speed, we can start getting these dolls dressed. Now, if you've enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.